she is a leader in the church. When she learns that a previous co-worker acquaintance has become an antichrist and will be expelled, she feels confused. Why would someone that was able to abide suffering and expend herself become an antichrist? She is convinced by the antichrist and defends her. How does she ultimately discern the antichrist? And how does she seek the truth to resolve her mistaken notion? In August of 2021, I accepted the work of Almighty God. Three months later, Marjorie and I were both elected to be church leaders. Marjorie had accepted God's work in the last days three months before me. And despite not being in the same church, we would attend co-worker gatherings together and discuss church work. Once during a gathering, Marjorie shared a story. She said she'd fallen ill, but continued to do her duty. Though her husband oppressed her, she didn't become negative. I really admired her for her good stature. If I had been in that situation, it might have affected my duty. I thought so highly of her. She bore a burden in her duty and never gave up even while her husband oppressed her. I saw her as the type of person who practiced the truth and was commended by God. Later on, a new church was formed and Marjorie and I parted ways. Then five months later, our supervisor Maria sent a message in our group chat saying that in our gathering, we would discuss discerning antichrists. And then she sent a link to Marjorie's Facebook page and told us not to interact with her because she was an antichrist. I was shocked. I just couldn't believe that Marjorie was an antichrist. I remembered her passion for her duty, how she sacrificed despite her suffering. Even when faced with illness and oppression, she continued her duty. Could someone who worked that hard be an antichrist? Maria must be mistaken. I just couldn't believe this. The supervisor sent another message saying, that she hoped I would block Marjorie on Facebook so that I wouldn't be disrupted by her. I really had trouble accepting that. It seemed unfair to treat Marjorie that way. She was so enthusiastic in her duty and had even helped me before. I didn't know what had happened with her or why she'd been deemed as an antichrist. I felt really confused and sad and I didn't want to block her. So I said, Marjorie isn't an antichrist. She just has notions. We shouldn't block her. Try to see things from her perspective and imagine how she feels. Our supervisor fellowshiped with me, but I didn't listen. She also sent me an experience testimony video on discerning antichrists and told me to have a look, saying that the video would be helpful for me but I just ignored it. After that, I sent a message to Marjorie to ask her what happened. Marjorie said, I was spreading certain notions, so I was removed from the group chat and everyone blocked me. It was really hurtful to me. I don't need to explain myself. God will scrutinize my actions. Are you guys discerning me too? I'm feeling really down. Everyone is discerning and abandoning me. She also said how displeased she was with the supervisor. I also started to think ill of Maria. I thought she wasn't handling things fairly. If Marjorie had certain issues, she should help and fellowship with her, not promptly deem her an antichrist. The church has principles for dealing with people and doesn't carelessly condemn people. If Marjorie was deemed to be an antichrist, there must have been a reason. Yes. A person is only expelled after they fail to repent, even after multiple fellowships. That's right. You should have gotten the story straight first. Yes. But I was too rash in that moment. I trusted only my judgment. 
and didn't think to seek the truth. Later they discussed discerning antichrists. I didn't join them and just went to bed. I felt pretty down and didn't know how to deal with the situation. I prayed before going to sleep. I didn't want to stray from God and live in that kind of state. I asked God to guide me so that I could understand His will in this. Good. The next morning, I felt much more at peace. I looked over the fellowship content from the previous night and came across a screen grab from a chat between the supervisor and Marjorie. Marjorie said, There's no way God is incarnate on earth. Who really has seen God personally? Almighty God's words don't accord with the Bible. They go beyond the Bible. I was shocked to see that Marjorie had said these things. She was boldly spreading these notions and didn't believe in Almighty God's work. Yes. Only then did I realize that I hadn't really understood the reason why Marjorie had been deemed as an antichrist and hadn't really looked into her behaviors. I had just assumed she couldn't be an antichrist. I was so blind and arrogant. I read a passage of God's words. Mm -hmm. Some people are able to bear hardships, can pay the price, are outwardly very well behaved, are quite well respected, and enjoy the admiration of others. Would you say that this kind of outward behavior can be regarded as putting the truth into practice? Could one determine that such people are satisfying God's will? Why is it that time and time again people see such individuals and think that they are satisfying God, walking the path of putting the truth into practice and keeping to God's way? Why do some people think this way? There is only one explanation for it. What explanation is that? It is that for a great many people, some questions, like what it means to practice the truth, to satisfy God, and what it means to genuinely possess the reality of the truth, are not very clear. Thus, there are some people who are often deceived by those who outwardly seem spiritual, noble, lofty, and great. As for people who can speak eloquently of letters and doctrines and whose speech and actions seem worthy of admiration, those who are deceived by them have never looked at the essence of their actions, the principles behind their deeds, or what their goals are. Moreover, they have never looked at whether these people truly submit to God, nor have they ever determined whether or not these people fear God and shun evil. They have never even discerned the essence of the humanity of these people. Rather, beginning with the first step of getting acquainted with them, they have, little by little, come to admire these people. And in the end, these people become their idols. Furthermore, in some people's minds, the idols whom they worship and who they think can abandon their families and jobs and seem superficially able to pay the price are the ones who are truly satisfying God and can really attain good outcomes and destinations. They see these idols as the ones God praises. What causes them to believe such a thing? What is the essence of this issue? What are the consequences it can lead to? The direct consequence of this is that people use human good behavior as a substitute for putting the truth into practice, which also satisfies their desire to curry favor with God. This gives them capital with which to contend with the truth, which they also use to reason and compete with God. At the same time, people also unscrupulously put God aside placing the idols they admire in his stead. Amen. 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 After reading God's words, I started to reflect. I always judged people by their outward behavior, thinking those that made sacrifices and endured suffering were seekers of truth and lovers of God. 
But this line of judgment was against the truth and led me to be deceived by people's outward behavior. Right. right. I thought of how the Pharisees would often explain the scriptures to people in synagogues. Outwardly, they seemed pious and did good deeds. But when the Lord Jesus came to do his work, they didn't seek and investigate, instead resisting and condemning him, and ultimately nailing him to the cross. Right. From this I saw that those with good behavior aren't necessarily good people. Only those that submit to God, love and accept the truth are truly good people. As for those that don't love or accept the truth, even if they outwardly do good things, they are falsely pious. Yes. That's right. Outwardly, Marjorie was able to endure some suffering and pay a price, but deep down she was fed up with the truth and hated God. She even publicly judged and denied God. She was one of Satan's ilk. Hmm. But I only saw her outward show of sacrifice. And so I believed, based on my notions, that she was devoted in her duty and couldn't be an antichrist. When the supervisor asked us to block Marjorie, I even became biased against her, and I didn't want to do my duty. I couldn't discern Marjorie as an antichrist, and so I was deceived. I was truly foolish. The next day, I saw that Marjorie was spreading rumors and fallacies on Facebook, saying that our church followed a mere person, not God. Reading her slander of the church, I really regretted that I had not blocked her and had even defended her. So I messaged her, asking why she was doing this. Marjorie replied, slandering the Church of Almighty God, and even urged me to leave the church. I just ignored her. Hmm. Two months later, the supervisor told me that Marjorie had sent messages to her, condemning the church, and said she was going to send slanderous videos to newcomers. She also spread many of her ideas about God's work in a group chat. Marjorie's aunt had notions too and left the church. Marjorie's spreading notions to deceive people was resisting despite knowing the true way. That's a very serious offense. She was an antichrist. Yes. Through her actions I saw. She had notions about the work of God, but she didn't try to seek the truth. She had even spread rumors and fallacies, blasphemed God, slandered the church, and deceived brothers and sisters into straying from God. I saw Marjorie was truly treacherous, like a sly fox that deceived people into leaving and denying God. She was truly very dangerous to the other brothers and sisters. Yes. yes. Later, I read these words of God. Oh. Mm. Almighty God says, those among brothers and sisters who are always giving vent to their negativity are lackeys of Satan, and they disturb the church. Such people must one day be expelled and cast out. In their belief in God, if people do not have a heart of reverence for God, if they do not have a heart of obedience toward God, then not only will they be unable to do any work for Him, but on the contrary, will become those who disturb His work and who defy Him. Believing in God, but not obeying or revering Him, and instead resisting Him, is the greatest disgrace for a believer. If believers are just as casual and unrestrained in their speech and conduct as unbelievers are, then they are even more evil than unbelievers. They are archetypal demons. Those who give vent to their poisonous, malicious talk within the church, who spread rumors, foment disharmony, and form cliques among the brothers and sisters, they should have been expelled from the church. 
Yet because now is a different era of God's work, these people are restricted, for they are decidedly to be cast out. All who have been corrupted by Satan have corrupt dispositions. Some have nothing more than corrupt dispositions, while others are different. Not only do they have corrupt satanic dispositions, but their nature is also extremely malicious. Not only do their words and actions reveal their corrupt satanic dispositions, these people are, moreover, the genuine devil, Satan. Their behavior interrupts and disturbs God's work. It impairs the brothers and sisters' entry into life, and it damages the normal life of the church. Sooner or later, these wolves in sheep's clothing must be cleared out. An unsparing attitude an attitude of rejection should be adopted toward these lackeys of Satan. Only this is standing on the side of God, and those who fail to do so are wallowing in the mire with Satan. People who genuinely believe in God always have Him in their hearts, and they always carry within them a God-revering heart a God-loving heart. Those who believe in God should do things cautiously and prudently, and all that they do should be in accordance with God's requirements and able to satisfy His heart. They should not be headstrong, doing whatever they please. That does not befit saintly propriety. People must not run amok, waving the flag of God all over the place while swaggering and swindling everywhere. This is the most rebellious sort of conduct. Families have their rules, and nations have their laws. And isn't it even more so in the house of God? Does it not all the more have strict standards? Does it not all the more have administrative decrees? People are free to do what they want, but the administrative decrees of God cannot be altered at will. God is a God who does not tolerate offense from humans. He is a God who puts people to death. Do people really not know this already? Amen. Through God's words, I realized that those that always spread notions, sow negativity, and disrupt the church are Satan's lackeys. They do not love the truth and have no fear of God in their hearts. Those that form cliques and cause ruptures, those that spread notions and rumors, denying and blaspheming God, are all demons, and they must be cast out and punished by God. Yes. Those led astray by rumors who stand with the Antichrists will also be cast out unless they reject them. Yes. Yes. Marjorie didn't read God's words or seek the truth to resolve her notions, nor did she fellowship with others. Instead, she questioned and denied God and even spread notions, openly judging and blaspheming God. She also sowed discord, roping in others, deceiving them into standing with her, forming biases against the supervisor which disrupted church work. Marjorie was truly evil. Her essence was that of a truth-hating, God-hating Antichrist. Yes. Yes. If it weren't for the guidance of God's words, I would have been tricked into standing with her and taking God as my enemy. I also realized that the purpose of fellowshipping on discerning Antichrists is to help brothers and sisters understand the truth and gain discernment so that they don't get deceived by Antichrists. Expelling antichrists from the church is done to protect God's chosen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Despite being a leader, I didn't have discernment of this antichrist and was led to believe her lies. I even stood on her side and defended her. I saw 
that I had become an accomplice to Satan. I sympathized with, protected, and showed love for an antichrist. This was an act of cruelty against God's chosen. Yes. That's right. Allowing antichrist to remain in the church can be disastrous. At any time, they might cause a catastrophe among God's chosen. Yes. I realized how foolish I'd been and really despised myself. So I prayed to God, repenting and begging his forgiveness. Later, I saw these words of God. Humans judge other humans based on their behavior. Those with good conduct are righteous, while those with vile conduct are wicked. God's standard for judging humans is based on whether or not their essence submits to him. One who submits to God is righteous, while one who does not is an enemy and a wicked person. Whether their behavior is good or bad, and whether their speech is correct or not. When God becomes flesh and comes to work among men, all behold him and hear his words, and all see the deeds that God works from within his body of flesh. At that moment, all man's notions become foam. As for those who have seen God appearing in the flesh, they shall not be condemned if they willingly obey him, whereas those who purposefully stand against him shall be deemed an opponent of God. Such people are antichrists, enemies who willfully stand against God. Those who harbor notions about God but are still ready and willing to obey him will not be condemned. God condemns man on the basis of man's intentions and actions, never for his thoughts and ideas. If he were to condemn man on the basis of his thoughts and ideas, then not a single person would be able to escape from the wrathful hands of God. Those who willfully stand against the incarnate God shall be punished for their disobedience. As for those who willfully resist God, their opposition stems from the fact that they harbor notions about God, which leads them in turn into actions that disrupt God's work. These people intentionally resist and destroy the work of God. They do not merely have notions about God, but they also engage in activities that disrupt his work. And for this reason, people of this kind shall be condemned. Amen. 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 God's words are very clear. God judges people based on their essence and their attitude toward the truth. Yes, indeed. Some people may have notions about God's work, but if they're able to seek the truth and put aside their notions, God will not condemn them. Mm. Those who always have notions about God incarnate, don't accept the truth, and even question and deny God, are all God's enemies and antichrists. No matter how good their outward behavior is, God condemns such people and casts them out. True. After reading God's words, I also realized that I only used to consider people's outward behavior. I thought Marjorie must be a seeker of truth because she was passionate, made sacrifices, always expended herself and worked as a church leader. But I didn't consider her essence or her attitude toward God and the truth. Marjorie had notions about God's work, and she didn't accept fellowship from others. She also spread her notions and publicly denied the incarnated God. Her essence was God-hating and truth-hating. She was an antichrist. Yes. That's right. I was misled and tricked by Marjorie's outward illusions and sided with an antichrist. I really lacked discernment. Only then did I realize that we must judge people and things by God's words and the principles of the truth, not just on people's outward behaviors. That's right. Yeah. It's easy to be deceived if we only see people's outward actions. The only accurate way to discern others is by God's words. Mm -hmm. right. right. We should primarily consider people's attitude toward Christ and the truth. This is a key aspect of the principle of discernment. Truly. Truly. After that, I saw another passage of God's words. Oh. Oh. 
God is purifying the church, cleansing it of disruptors and disturbers, antichrists, evil spirits, evil people, non-believers, those who do not truly believe in him, and those who cannot even render service. This is called clearing the field. It is called winnowing. You can see that God does everything in its time, not haphazardly. His management work follows the plan he has made, and he does everything in a step-by-step -step fashion, not haphazardly. And what of those steps? Each step of work God does on people must take effect. And when he sees it has, he does the next step of work. God has figured out to himself how his work may take effect, what he must say and do. He does his work according to what people need, not haphazardly. Whatever work will be effective on people, God does it. And whatever has no impact on effectiveness, God surely does not do it. For instance, when there's need of negative object lessons for God's chosen to develop discernment, false Christs, antichrists, evil spirits, evil people, and disturbers and disruptors will appear in the church on which others may develop their discernment. If God's chosen learn the truth and can identify such people, then those people have rendered their service, and there is no longer value in their existing. At that time, God's chosen people will rise up to expose and report them, and the church will immediately cleanse them away. All God's work has its steps, and all those steps are arranged by God on the basis of what man needs in their life and their stature. Amen. 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 After reading God's words, I realized that though many people do a duty in the church, not all of them are God's chosen, and not all are his sheep. Wolves have hidden among them. God allows antichrists and non-believers into the church to help us gain discernment and distinguish good from evil. Mm. Yes. Despite doing her duty in the church, Marjorie didn't truly believe in God. She just came into the church to analyze God's work, not to seek and understand the truth. She was a wolf in sheep's clothes and an evil one cast out by God. Mm. God is now purifying the church and exposing each kind of person. No antichrists, evildoers, or non-believers can remain hidden, but will all be exposed through God's work. Only those that truly believe in God, love the truth, and seek the truth will remain, and only they will be purified and saved by God. Mm, yes. Yes. Through this experience, I gained some discernment and learned some things. First, I can't only see people's outward behavior, how much they suffer, because many people can do these things, especially religious frauds. Second, I shouldn't adore mere people, because God detests the adoration of people. One should only look up to and worship God. Mm. Right. Amen. Third, as a church leader, I need to consider my brother's and sister's life entry and prioritize things that are beneficial to them. Fourth, when faced with issues, I should have a God-fearing heart and learn to seek and wait. I shouldn't recklessly judge and condemn based on my own notions. That is likely to offend God. Right. Fifth, I should read more of Almighty God's words. Only with the guidance of God's words can we see through Satan's evil plots and stand on the side of truth. Right. I also realized the preciousness of truth. Only by knowing the truth can we have insight and discern evildoers, antichrists, and non-believers. Right. In the future, I will read more of God's words and base my actions and judgments of people and things on God's words with truth as my principle. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God.